one of the biggest names in fashion, sizing up the failures of his own industry. Two minutes remaining. Blah, 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 boom. Make it work. Tim Gunn, writing in this Washington Post essay that designers refuse to make clothes that fit American women, calling it not just a poor business decision, but also a disgrace. With the average American woman wearing between a size 16 and 18, Gunn says there is money to be made in plus-size clothing, but some designers and merchandisers believe the plus-size woman is complicated, different, and difficult. Designers and models, we're going down to the runway, everyone. The Project Runway mentor even criticizing his own show, saying it has not been a leader on this issue, claiming contestants audibly groan. We have some new clients for you. When asked to create looks for non models, Victoria's Secret CMO Ed Razik has been under fire following his remarks about why the brand's annual fashion show does not include transgender or plus size models. During an interview for Vogue, Razik used the word transsexual, which is deemed outdated and offensive, and said that trans and plus size women do not exemplify the fantasy that Victoria's Secret is trying to sell. The exec also revealed that he and the VS team have previously thought of casting trans and plus size models, but ultimately decided against doing so. Razik said, in part, we market to who we sell to and we don't market to the whole world. We attempted to do a television special for plus sizes in 2000. No one had any interest in it. Still don't. Image is powerful, um, but also image is superficial. I know that when I was younger, I would look in that mirror every single day and hate what I saw. Why don't I have a thigh gap? Why does it look like this thigh ate the other one? More pimples, are you kidding me? I hate myself. And that's so sad, because I can't get those years back of self-loathing, calorie obsession and jealousy. With the rise of social media, we literally have a weapon of mass destruction to our self-esteem 24-7. Social media is a curated, filtered, often airbrushed, and sometimes even lifestyle illusion. Is that how I'm meant to look? I meant to be that perfected image? Wow, well, I can't even look like that, and that's me. That's wrong. So why is it that we feel these insecurities in the first place? Because from a very young age, we've been conditioned to believe that our success and our happiness is highly dependent on our attractiveness. Because if we are insecure, we are a motivated consumer. We spend more on beauty than on education. And that's just beauty, that's not to mention fashion. Combined, they're a $1.3 trillion industry who've made a business out of setting unreal expectations of beauty and then profiting and exploiting the insecurities that they've helped create. The business of beauty is ugly. Growing up, I always felt left out. I never feel like I fit the mold. And this always left me devastated. Cara's story exposes a serious side effect of the industry that is far from glamorous. In tonight's big picture, fashion made me hate my body. It makes me feel sick. It's horrible and disgusting. Sexual harassment and body shaming in the industry. She's speaking out on what may have always been a dirty little secret. Modeling is the sale of mostly women's bodies for the purpose of moving merchandise. The main concept we teach is the beauty ideal myth. We get all the kids to have magazines and they pick out the perfect body. And we then break it down for them. Okay, so what's the perfect body then? Well, it's tall, it's big boobs, small waist, or it's ridiculous abs, it's a tan, it's straight hair, it's no flaws. Is that real? No. Is that achievable? No. What type of bodies would you want to see more in the media? Probably more plus size. I feel like there should be more, because I feel like they're not appreciated enough. I don't know, I always like looked up to fat girls, and I, I never like worshipped a thin body as much as a lot of media did. I felt very excluded personally just because nobody was talking about my body type. I'm tall so I like to see more tall people. <laughs> it makes me feel better <laughs> about myself. I mean just all kinds of bodies really. I don't think we should like limit it to like any one particular like, type. I think due to the lack of representation I was 
Insecure, definitely. I had a lot of difficulty growing up in a society where everything is very closed-minded, especially with beauty. It makes it harder to define what a perfect body is if there are so many out there. Seeing someone that you can relate to in the media is everything as a child, and a lot of people are not granted that luxury. So what are the sacrifices and costs for you to try and attain this? It's so detrimental to your mental and physical health. And guess what? Who wins from this battle? The brands, the magazines, the pharmaceutical industry. And who loses? We lose. The beauty gap is the space in between the unrealistic standards of beauty that we're being provided and where our true beauty actually lies. What's in between is unrealistic images, images that actually don't exist in real life. What's in between extreme Photoshop, body doubles, underage models being marketed to women. So I I'm trying to rack my brains. I don't think there's one woman I know that doesn't have some sort of issue exactly. with her body. Yeah. Some sort of Why do you think that is? Because from such a young age, we're told what beauty is. We're sold creams that are meant to make us look ageless. We're shown images uh, of models in lingerie that are so retouched that it's not possible. So we're told that this is beauty, that this is success, this is what women have to look like to be happy with themselves. And it really is a challenge. And we actually have to take it on ourselves to unlearn those bad habits and relearn that we need to look in the mirror and pick out the things that we love about ourselves and to celebrate those, not to pick ourselves apart. Yeah. So the point of all this is, this delusion is not the exception, it's the rule. 99% of advertising images are retouched. The altering of these images alters our minds and these images don't exist in the real world. Pictures are not pictures of me, they are constructions. And they are constructions by professionals, by hairstylists and makeup artists and photographers and stylists and all of their assistants and pre-production and post-production. And they build this, that's not me. How could that possibly be? The images presented to us are not real. They're manufactured. And who does this serve? The beauty industry. This affects every aspect of our society. This is common in fashion. It's called Frankenstein Photoshop, using one model's legs or uh, arms on another. What can we deduce about good bodies based on these women? Good bodies are thin, straight, and most often white. There's nothing wrong with having a body like this, but the body positivity movement strives to create representation for marginalized bodies. We want to see fat bodies, queer bodies, bodies of color, and everything in between up front and center in mainstream media. I've been an advocate for women who were larger than a size 12 for many, many, many years, and there are a hundred million of them. So why doesn't this industry wake up? But do you remember when it was like, oh no, I don't want a big butt, you know? It's, I remember being at school and being so ashamed to have curves. So again, it just reaffirms that the beauty standards are constantly changing. And, and it's, not just, it's not just women who suffer oh, with body confidence. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, not at all. It doesn't discriminate. Speak to your body in a loving way. It's the only one you've got, it's your home, and it deserves your respect. If you see anyone tearing themselves down, build them back up and watch your life positively grow when you give up the pursuit of perfection. Because the real beauty ideal is being imperfectly you. So we need to embrace our bodies for more than that. We need to stop trying to attain perfection because we're good enough already. And if we could start redefining the beauty ideal, Imagine celebrating someone's achievements, their accomplishments, their personality, their morals and their values. To me, that's beautiful.